Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Local Pundit. I'm Josh Anthony. This is your Wrexham reaction for Match Day 43. Yes, Match Day 43 and Wrexham beat Crawley Town 4-1, one of the hottest teams in the league. And we come back and we smack them uh, at the Stoke Carras. Yes, it was a brilliant, brilliant day of football, a brilliant day all around for our uh, for everything that happened today on the local pundit, on the channels, on the post ninety, it was absolutely great. Uh, so I, I'm I'm buzzing today. Usually I do the uh, the Rex reaction tomorrow, but um, I figured screw it. I figured absolutely screw it. I was going through the notes. I was watching. I got a bunch of messages here, and uh, I figured I'm gonna get up and do something. You know what I mean? I can I can sort it out. I'll figure it out. And I was listening to the interviews, so um, wanted to get on and share it with you. So three hour show incoming. I don't know. We'll see. It could be about. Uh, could be about uh, you know five minutes, but who knows? BJ Ford announced what's going on. My guy, BJ Ford, hell of a win today for the lads. Absolutely, it's an absolutely legendary day. Uh, and BJ, good to see you, my brother. Good to see you. I hope everyone is well. Smash a like on the video. Get involved. Get your um, excuse me. Get your memberships. Get your thumbnails. Get everything going. Uh, super chats. We had we had ten memberships gifted today. By the way, on the local pundit. Fantastic. It was absolutely uh, an epic day. Getting going, getting things happening. Merch is coming. Uh, Producer Ann's got it. Uh, so uh, we're working on that too. Uh, BJ, likewise, baby. Good to see you, man. That's my guy, BJ Ford. Good dude. Really good dude. Um, anyway, smash a like on the video. Get involved. And as we say, let's get back into it. I'm going to talk about this. John says huge three points today. Let's do it again Saturday. I, yes, I I, I think we're going to do it again Saturday. Um, job's not done yet. The job is not done yet. But I'll tell you right now. We are uh, we are making noise, and I, I really like it. Nick Donald's in the house, uh, four to four to one. It's not over, son. Now let's go unstock that part. Yes, that's great. I love it. Uh, while Ivan wears uh, his skirt, I love it. I believe there's a little bit of a rhyme there. I believe there's a little bit of a rhyme there. I was just going through my notes and watching everything too. I was going through the uh, and I was going through some of the some of the goals, and I was like, this is just indicative of what absolutely happened today. I know it's probably, you know, if you guys can see it. I mean, look at this goal here. Look at the effort. This is why we're going to do more stuff. Look at this. Oh, look at this. Hundred and two. Oh. Oh, man, if that doesn't get you excited, if that literally does not get you excited, I do not know what does because that was awesome. What great goals today. Uh, every single goal today was just pure effort, pure behind uh, behind the team, behind the club, behind the town. Um, absolutely. Uh, it, that does, uh, it just insanely excited, insanely excited. And um, it's so cool to see. Also, too, uh, before we were talking about the match and everything, um, you know, I, I'm going to put this out there. Uh, Sheldon was at the game today doing the build up. Uh, Sheldon flew over for Helsinki. You see him on the show all the time. Uh, he is one of our regulars along with Ives. Um, and, and Sheldon was there and he had his camera and he had the build up that he did today was just like where I, I would, I would love to have everything go. And it was just awesome. Um, you know, he, he saw Parkinson. He talked to Parkinson actually. He taught, he saw Maca. He saw, he saw, he saw Fletcher. He saw Moles. He saw everybody. Uh, he was right there. So if you haven't watched that, go earlier today. It's a game day buildup. It's uh, it was streamed about nine hours ago. It was off the cuff. He said, "Hey, are you? Can you? Are you available?" And I said, "Yeah, sure." He had his camera ready to go. Boom! He popped right in, and he had the nice game day buildup. And um, that's hopefully uh, where we can take uh, the local pundit things we're doing. I think it's really special. So big up to Sheldon, my guy. Big up to Sheldon. And in uh, uh, the best part of my day. Other than you know, obviously spending it with you lot uh, was I mean, was when he when Sheldon was walking on the street and he got recognized and uh, it was the coolest thing of all time and I'll tell you if that's not if that I don't know if you can see that if that is not pure joy if you can't see it yeah if that is not pure joy I don't know what is uh, so big up to Sheldon so um, I, I'm really just uh, really pumped for him so awesome um, yeah really awesome anyway so. Uh, Thank you, Sheldon. And, uh, you know, everyone is uh, is really happy what you did today. You did great, great work. Uh, hey, buddy, I'm still I'm still parked. You still parking this? Are you still, <laughs> you're parking the parky stuff? Absolutely. Oh, uh, I'm pumped. He said I'm still pumped. Uh, that was that that was a screenshot. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Um, all right. Let's get into a little bit, too. I want to talk about some of the things that I saw today in the match. Um, you know, some uh, you know, some people see things differently in regards to uh, when you're watching the game and you want to like, you want to like, why are we doing certain things? And, you know, um, 
I thought we came out and we didn't have possession, and that's fine. I, we had a plan, and we we effectively done it done exactly what Parkinson wanted to do. Uh, I thought the lineup was right, right spot on, and uh, I thought it was really good. Uh, I thought it was a really good performance overall. Um, concern is that um, you know we got three games left, and I don't think. Sorry, the concern is not that we're not going to be up for it because we are definitely up for it. So after the match, Steve Parkin uh, had a, had a, had an interview. And I thought it was really cool. Uh, he said, uh, "This is not quotes. This is some things I I, I was reading. Uh, I, I I jotted down during the interview with Steve Parkin. Uh, he said we worked uh, we worked long and hard over the weekend. He said that we we respected their players. Crawley Town was one of the hottest teams coming in there. Absolutely. Uh, then we stuck to our we stuck to our um, our game." Game plan. Uh, we worked hard off the ball, and I think we actually, I actually like think today was one of the one of the games where I thought we were actually the hardest worker. I thought Andy Cannon and Elliot Lee and Paul Mullen, for that man, uh, for that matter, were all over the part, all over the pitch. The goals were all from turnovers and us going back and giving good effort and going in there and doing and and actually, um, you know, actually like creating those goals. Um, the Elliot Lee cross for the first goal to uh, Barnett, who which he admitted went off his face, it was his first goal. Uh, was was absolutely spectacular. It was a uh, it was a turnover. Elliot Lee looked up, he sees Barney going in, and I and from the interviews I was just watching, Parkinson has told the wingbacks to get up further up the pitch. And, and Barnett said he uh, in his interview he said he got up the pitch and he wanted to make a, be a little bit more aggressive, and he did, and it turned out to help him out to get that goal. Doesn't have, matter how it goes if uh, in did this put tush push I don't care he went off his face it was his first goal and he said afterwards he's like well I saw Max get his first goal for the for the team and he's like I want to get mine so um, that goal to me was absolutely spectacular absolutely spectacular um, you know so I'm really proud of that um, Steve Parkinson went on to say these aren't quotes it's just like things that I pull out there um, he said uh, Ryan Barnett. Uh, uh, coming back uh, he got he got a great ball in for Lee he said he said we saw. Uh, he said, we, we saw what they did against Mansfield on the weekend, meaning Crawley Town, and he said, we can't switch off. Uh, every one of us has to do a shift, and we put a shift in, and the goals were great. A lot of, lot of possession out there. Um, we're talking about the, the second goal, the fabulous goal. They're talking about Andy Cannon that brought that pinged back for the fabulous goal. That was a great overlap. Uh, he said he's delighted for Andy Cannon uh, on his goal, and uh, you know he's he's been a great player for the season. Uh, he said it was a great four days work. Uh, seen a lot of results and how difficult the results are to come by. Yes, in this in this time of the season, like the results coming by, nothing's going to be easy. We're going against four screen rowers who are fighting for their lives. Granted, they're at the basement, but still, they're still fighting. It's not going to be an easy match. So none of the none of the three points we're putting in uh, that we're putting in now is going to be easy. Hey, what's up, Ivan? How you doing, brother? Good to see you, my man. Ivan, obviously on the watch along this afternoon with us. I've changed my socials there. There you go. The socials are up. Ivan, uh, Ivan's uh, putting a putting a full day full day full day shift in. Um, so good to see you, brother. Um, he uh, he went out to say we're not going to let up against Forrest. Uh, we need to go and take care of business. Uh, this is uh, Steve Parkin. Uh, and make sure all of our lads are okay. Rest up and recuperate. Prepare for flat Friday on Saturday. Watch some film and get in and get back in. So clearly we're focused. The job isn't done yet. Uh, we scored two in the first half and then two in the second half. Uh, and I, we had said at halftime, I don't know, I said, you got to finish your dinner. Finish your dinner. Go there. Finish your dinner. And that's exactly what we did. Uh, with goals um, from Andy, uh, and unfortunately, it's like I wanted. I wanted uh, Elliot Lee to me uh, was my man of the match. Uh, at right, uh, close behind him, uh, close behind him was uh, Andy Cannon. But Elliot Lee covered every blade, blade of grass. He had a, a minor sit. You know, it was. I mean, technically, he got dropped. If you want to put it that way, for the last match, came on was an injury to Mendy. Apparently, Mendy is on uh, is on crutches. Stace saw him tonight with. Uh, Stace saw him tonight. Uh, uh, with Sheldon and said he was, was a bit down. So I don't think we'll be seeing him. But, uh, you know, uh, with uh, Elliot Lee taking a sit last match and then coming back in today, I think he just showed his class. Uh, unfortunately, he did not get his goal. Uh, you know, he had header off the bar. But he was absolutely fantastic. Elliot Lee was absolutely fantastic. I'm so proud of what the team put in, uh, in to get, together. Uh, Ken says, uh, great uh, it's great to aim uh, high, Dale. Oh, I'll get the Dale. Uh, okay, let's do this. Dale uh, Dale Linton is in the house. Uh, love the guitar, Dale. How you doing? Um, I think he's new to the to the show, um, so uh, good to see you. Uh, uh, am I allowed to be disappointed and not repeating as champions? Is not winning the league the point, or is it the only time that is important uh, in the prem? So, uh, two minds there, two minds there, and I got some stick for it earlier, and everyone's like, let's just go up, let's just go up. I'm in two minds there. 
uh, I want to win the league. I don't know if it's math mathematically possible. We still need to have a couple things uh, go our way for this. Uh, Stockport are uh, at this point flying. They're on top. And I'm going to bring up the league table real quick as I talk about this. Uh, league two table. Uh, league two, if I can spell. Uh, I can't spell, but I can bring it up. There you go. <clears throat> okay. Uh, but uh, Dale, it's a good, it's a good shout. And Ken's Ken backs it up. It's a great plan. Uh, great to aim high, Dale. Prom promotion is the main thing for us. So those are those are those could be uh, mutually. Uh, those could actually be. Uh, I might try to say this. Both are true at the same time. Both are true at the same time. Okay. But let's bring the let's bring this up here real quick. If you guys can see that, look at Stockport and look at us. Uh, also, look at Doncaster. Jesus H. Uh, Doncaster's game was postponed today. Stockport are uh, have 83 points. They've won the last five in a row. We've won the last four out of five. Those That is championship form right there. Championship form. So they have a game in hand on us. Uh, they all they play against um, an Mansfield Town right there. But this is, this is super key right there. Look at that. That's five points right there. Five points. That's great. Um, Stockport play or well, play us in the last day of the season. So they play Morka on Saturday while we're playing four screen rovers. Knotts County, they play them on Tuesday. We're going to be doing those, those watch alongs as well. Um, can Knotts County do a favor for us? And Stockport, Accrington, Stanley. So they have four games left. We have three games left, obviously. So um, if, uh, if we're going to win the league, I think we're going to go up. I'm going to go out and say that. Uh, Vegas trip, yeah. Um, if we're going to win the league, uh, I, I think we need a little bit of help. We need to win out. We need to basically, I think we need to win out or come very close to winning up. But Stockport need to do a job. Uh, Morecambe need to do a job. Accrington, somebody. And then we need to uh, take care of business if we get that far. So, you know, a lot could happen. We are still in the hunt for this. We are definitely still in the hunt uh, to win this league. Uh, and he says, uh, Ken says it's still possible. All we can do is keep winning. Stockport might come back to us. You know, yeah, come back. To, yeah, you never know. Uh, if promotion, Vegas trip. I mean, I haven't been to Vegas I don't know the last time I was in Vegas, but hey, we'll definitely be up north for the for the game for sure uh, in Santa Clara on the 27th or whatever it is. Uh, definitely do that. Um, let's see here. Another interview was Ryan Barnett. Uh, he got his goal, the first goal for the club. Admitted it went off his face, but in his interview was actually uh, uh, great. And he was actually on our show earlier today. Uh, Sheldon was, was in his face with the camera, which is awesome. Uh, first goal for the club, he said, is that the ball went out off my face. I had to be switched on for the full 90, he said. Uh, that was one thing that they talked about. He, they said, uh, Barnett said he knew how big of a game this was. The gaffer came in with a game plan and we took care of it. Um, the wing backs, he wanted to get up, uh, toward get up further and get to the back post. And he said he got in there and he gambled a little bit. Uh, and uh, they asked him about having Max's goal, Max's first goal. Now he wanted to get it, and he jokingly said, uh, that uh, he he wanted to get he wanted to level Max. So they're one one, and I love that that competition between the two right sided uh, def defensive uh, defensive men. Um, so that's great. Um, so uh, he got his first goal, Max got his first goal, Max was solid today too. Um, which was really impressive. But uh, Barnett, uh, in his interview, and in his first goal for the club is, is fantastic. Uh, they asked him about Mullen. He said, you know, asked about his 100th goal. He said it's a ridiculous stat for Mullen, 102 and 137 matches now. Absolutely insane. Um, he said Paul Mullen's brilliant player. And, um, you know, it's it's just uh, all around, all, all around results there. They asked him about Andy Cannon. Uh, he asked uh, Andy Cannon – Great when he drops deep. He plays balls down the side. This is Barney again. Sorry, Barney again. So Andy Cannon, he said that he makes his job very easy, uh, that he gets to put the, put the balls down the side and play, and he gets the ball in the box. Uh, he said most teams are fighting at this point, fighting for our lives and their promotion. Um, he said they asked him about the dart celebration. Uh, yeah, at the end, he had the dart celebration. Um, and he said they play a lot of darts. Uh, around the club a lot, which is probably the past time, obviously. And he saw that he thought he would throw that throw that in. So I mean, a fair play. Uh, he got his first. He got his first. Uh, uh, he got his first celebration. So uh, good for him. What are you going to do? I do the dart. So that's good on him. Um, the other interview that we had was the Andy Cannon interview, uh, and Andy Cannon, who I thought was absolutely brilliant today, um, absolutely brilliant today. Uh, uh, Carol in HR says, uh, "What up? How you doing, brother?" Uh, Ken Waring went said, "One win, one draw, one loss, and the next three for Stockport, and we can pass them in the last game if we beat them." It's not unheard of, Ken. It is not unheard of, my guy. And I, 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 it could happen. 
it could happen. You never know. Um, and at the interview, the interview that uh, the last interview was this one was the Andy Cannon interview. Uh, he asked them. So he said it was a great result. Andy Cannon said, and again, these aren't quotes. These are just uh, these are semi quotes, I guess. That's what they're saying. But I have to type so fast with the little, you know, I don't know, ninety words uh, per minute guy. But I I, I do type uh, decently, and you can see that I have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, misspell misspelling here. So. If I screw it up, it's because I can't read my own typing. Uh, he said it was a great result. Uh, we were disappointed to concede at the end. I was disappointed too. But, you know, because AO deserved a uh, – AO in the back line, who have been absolutely tremendous, uh, deserve – Deserve, deserve a clean sheet. And unfortunately, it didn't go that way. But uh, he said uh, they came at us in the second half, uh, but it ended up being a good day. He said that the, the defenders deserve a clean sheet. It was a good result. And now the on to Saturday. So a lot, of, a lot of short, like bang, bang, on to Saturday, bang, bang, on to Saturday. You know, um, they're they're really good setup. And obviously, they have good uh, media training, but uh, they definitely all seem focused. They definitely all seem focused. The only one that branched out was on was Mullen uh, on the weekend when he talked about the chance. Um, which I totally respect what he did. So talking about the chance. So uh, what else? He said the gap. Uh, Andy Cannon said the gaffer did a lot of research uh, and showed us a lot of clip, cl clips and how uh, we can press them. Uh, he said they asked him where he likes. Why is he uh, got a better goal goal scoring form this season? And he said uh, he's a little bit further at the pitch. Uh, he said he likes being up there. He said other seasons he was pushed back a bit, but uh, it's just the first time he's had a good run of games in the eight role. So, uh, you know, it's kind of sitting in the hole, kind of that uh, kind of sitting in the hole a little bit forward, not sitting back a little bit because now we have Geo and Stash back there and Elliot Lee kind of doing their thing. So he said he's happy to move back and, and get in that position, but he likes being a little bit more forward, which has uh, contributed to his uh, to his goals, uh, all of his goals, by the way. Uh, so uh, it's unfortunate on this one. So his goal came from uh, came from I think it was a Elliot Lee uh, dispossessed, got it back, had a shot. Ellie Lee was un unlucky not to score today again, like I said. And uh, Andy Cannon on the spot at a, at a tight angle, at a really tight angle, bang, put it in the back of the net. Earlier, he's had some shots that have gone, you know, way, way, way up the in the air fruitcake. And it wasn't, wasn't great, but he likes to smash it. He's not going to hold back. He wants to smash it. And he does have the goal of the season for me. Still has the goal of the season for me. Um, but the goal today that he put in on the rebound, Johnny on the spot, Everyone flooding forward, and we'll talk about that because their manager mentioned that and how and how we play a little bit, kind of imposing ourselves. The goal that he had today was absolutely just um, – it was it was a great goal. It was a great follow-up. Not like an Andy Lampard goal for me uh, in the middle, kind of moving forward. Um, a great follow-up goal and really impressive on him. And also Mullen's goal um, was all about heart and effort and everything that's on the shirt. And as we should, or everything that's on the shirt. And as, um, you know, I'm going to go back up to this this one right here. Uh, BJ said, uh, one of my favorite Mullen goals. Absolutely. It's a pure, he was the only one in the half. The only red shirt in the half, hustling and going to put it in. 102, bang, back of the net. And just ball went in there. He tracked that down. Sure, poor pass. Uh, a, missed, a missed pass from the defender. But it might have been Harry McGuire's brother. I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, just pure effort and just... 20 yards out, rounded the keeper uh, with with it, just very, very confident. You can see he's on form. And, uh, you know, they said that he was taking uh, pain medication because he was injured. Thought it was his back. They think it's his, uh, they think it's maybe his leg or whatever. But he looked fit as fries today. Um, so what a great goal for him. Uh, that was that. That was, they were talking about Andy Cannon, talking about the, talking about Mullen here. As you can see, I'm still gassed from today. Un, un, unbelievable. He said, um, Andy Cannon went on to say, we need Paul in fine form. Uh, he scores a lot of goals, and there's more to come. And he also said different people contributing with the goals. Max has been superb, and Barney as well. It's good for them to get another uh, get their goals. Uh, and asked, asked, asked uh, Andy Cannonball Run about the weekend game against Forest Green uh, Rovers, and he said it's another tough cat task. It's a different task. The, they have to uh, recover, reset, and get ready for the, the Forest Green Rovers uh, game on Saturday. So, um, you know, they're locked in. There's three games left, and they are locked in. Uh, they're absolutely locked in. Um, Carol says, uh, watching tonight uh, was the first time I truly felt my bones were going up. Carol, I'm not going to say it out loud, but I think we're going up. I think we look good. Uh, I'm chomping at the bit to talk about League One, but I'll wait impatiently. <laughs> Yeah. Dale, where are you watching from, man? Uh, and welcome. I think you're new to it. Um, also, get involved. Get Drop a like. Uh, get involved. Get your memberships, your super chats. People are 
We're giving out memberships today, which is great. Uh, and it supports the channel and supports us uh, so we can allow us to do more things. Uh, so it's really cool to see. Um, and uh, also uh, some really good familiar faces in there. So thank you very much. Smash a like on the video. Love it, Carol. Uh, here we go. Here we go. This is Ken Waring. So on the other side of things, I wanted to bring this up to uh, was uh, Scott Waring. Uh, Scott Lindsay, sorry. He is the Crawley Town uh, manager. Mm. Dallas, Texas, he says. Dallas, Texas. Awesome. Well done. Get into the Discord, Dale. Uh, get into the Discord if you're uh, if you're not in it. It's a great uh, for everyone to keep together and chat during the week. Uh, it's in the uh, it's somewhere there. Someone dropped the link in the Discord up there. I, I can do it in a little bit too. So uh, the Crawley Town manager had a good interview. I watched a little bit of that. Uh, John told me to watch it, and I did. Uh, John, I hope you're well. Um, John H. That is. Uh, he said uh, it's a difficult place to come, meaning the Stoke. Uh, he said the man of the goals was disappointing. Uh, we wanted to ask more questions of them. We never got in their six yard box once. Interesting enough. Disappointed with um, the strange not to come away, uh, away and challenge. So you can see on his face, he was basically saying that their team were ready, were ready, and they proved it. They had what sixty something percent. Uh, if I could bring up this, the stats today, hold on. Before I go into his quotes, there a little bit more. Uh, four one today. What a score line! Uh, what an absolute score line. Okay, here's the stats. Here's the stats, and we're gonna go on. We're gonna continue to go on with what he's saying. Let me know if you can see that. If not, I'll just read them to you. Um, so they had 15 shots. We had 14. They had eight on target. We had seven. Look at the possession: 68 to 32 possession. Uh, possession. They almost had double. They had more than double of our passes: 663 to 321. Pass accuracy: 89 percent, 76 for us. Fouls: six apiece, 12. One yellow card apiece, no reds, uh, three offsides to their one, six corners to their um, to their nine. I mean, th those are interesting stats uh, for uh, for us. And, uh, you know, we came out with the W. But more on what he was saying, Scott Lindsay he was saying, he said, give the opposition credit. Uh, this is two managers in a row now that are just like, humbled to the fact that like we put our we put our best out but you know they were just better than us they had better players uh he said uh give the opposition credit we huffed and we puffed and we were outside of their box we made changes at the top of the pitch we wanted to score uh two, but it was too we got to score but it was too little too late um and that this this will not define our season they're going to be tough going into the playoffs uh they are in what position here crawley town are in seventh position so they are going to be tough i believe that they will be in the playoffs MK Don's crew and Barrow seem to be the three, the four teams that I think are going to be in there. I think the top three will remain the same, in my opinion. I don't know which order. Uh, I think uh, you know Rexham can still win the league, but I think that's going to be our playoffs. So I cannot wait to see these teams going at it. But I love the grit of what he said. This won't define our season. But remember, Crawley Town won three out of the last five, last last four games. Uh, and they were fairly hot. Doncaster's the hottest team in the league, other than Stockport, but they're 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 hot, and um, they're an impressive impressive side. And I like what the manager said. And I think uh, and I'm going to quote John: "They will go through brick walls for this manager, and I think they're going to be in the playoffs. Uh, and I I would be scared to play them, which is why we need to go up automatically, uh, and it won't be our problem. We will sit back, we will do watch alongs and watch, and be like, yep, awesome, fantastic. So there you go." Um, he brought up another thing about Wrexham. Uh, this is the manager, Scott Lindsay. He said they do really well uh, as um, really well. They, they turn the ball over the final third of the pitch. They run hard and fast. They said the second goal came out of nowhere. Um, and they have a way of, of, of playing uh, playing very effective. Uh, they're strong, they're athletic, and they just fell short tonight. So I'm meeting uh, the other side of things. So, um, yeah, it's um, – it's an impressive, uh, it's an impressive win. And it's impressive for even the other side of things to to recognize that T C R L runner one. I think Rexham have done good and done enough now. I think so too. And I, by the way, uh, thank you for the note, uh, T C R L. I did respond to you. I hear you. And uh, like I said, I always appreciate the feedback and uh, I appreciate the support. So I just want to let you know that I I did you know I do hear what people say in the comments and I do get back to people and um, I'm always open to. Um, to improving on the show and what we're doing here. So I appreciate uh, you doing that. So thank you. And I, I just want to try, I hear you. Um, but uh, just, just thank you, just feedback, fella. Oh, of course. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. All good here, my friend. All good here. Uh, okay, let's go. But thank you. Keep it up, everyone. This is a community. 
I'm just here, um, you know, hosting, but this is, this is, this is all of you and your community and uh, I'm happy to do it. All right. So a couple things went out there. Uh, the leader. Oh, okay. And, uh, Ivan is also there too. Ivan hears it as well. Uh, Cause he's also, uh, he's also a big part of the show and, uh, yeah, he wants to keep it real, but be a part of it as well. So we hear it too. Okay, moving on. This is something I want. I want to. I might open up in a little bit. Um, I think we talked it a little bit, to, not to death, but I, I was really just impressed. But I, you know, there's some things that uh, I saw today after the match, which I thought was important. Uh, and I was going to get to it tomorrow. It's also, one of the reasons to um, uh, stay, stay real, my guy Ives. Um, I brought. I wanted to see this too. I don't. I haven't read the article. I just read the. I just read the. Um, I just read the headline, i.e., uh, you know, it's the it's the Playboy version of it. You know, I just read the I don't read the articles. Uh, I, sorry, I read the articles, obviously. So the Rex uh, Rex may see temporary cop stand as approved for eighteen months. This is very interesting. We can dive into this in the next few days. Um, so uh, this is obviously not related to the match today, but this came up later uh, after the match, and I thought it was really interesting. So Rex and AFC has been given permission to keep its temporary cop stand in place for 18 months after councils agreed to grant more time. It was originally proposed by officials from Wrexham Council that the 2,289-seat uh, Cedar standing at the racecourse ground should only be kept in place for 12 months. However, members of the local uh, authorities planning community said that it could potentially lead to being closed before the 24 25 season finishes interesting uh it opened in december it was granted blah 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 due to funding delays and site issues ryan and rob install a temporary stand in the short term uh open blah 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 the two nil against december 23rd i remember that uh let's see just made a discord account how do i join your group uh okay pause right there here we go i'm gonna put it in there this is uh, it's a live show Got to got to be a part of it. Oh, my thing is going off like mad. Uh, I apologize. Uh, copy. Hold on, hold on, Dale. I got you, brother. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Hold on. Lion heart. I think I did a Hulkamania thing today too. At some point. Here we go. Please, thank. Look at that. Let me know if that worked. There you go. There you go. Bang. That's the Discord. If you're not in the Discord, you're missing out. Um, and everyone's involved, and it's a lot of fun. Um, uh, there's so many people in there. Now, I say spit. There's so many people in there now uh, from other channels and everything. It's really cool. Uh, so get involved. There's the Discord link. Um, let me see here. So going on, the capacity of the stand is approximately half of the replacement of the cop stand. Uh, so in terms of principal development, given the former stand and the, and the uh, consent consented theme uh, scheme there are no issues in relation to the principle of development standards noted to have temporary appearance and it does not have high quality design features however on the basis that is uh on the site temporarily there are no objections to raising to raise raise to this so they so for whatever reason uh for whatever reason uh, it seems like we got extended and i think this is this is something we're going to watch over the summer so let's just keep an eye on this. This is something I wanted to bring up today uh, after the match. Uh, while a new date for work on permanent permanent stand to start has yet to be announced, says Councillor Davies. If we're minded, if we're minded today uh, to grant this in retrospect, that the twelve month temporary planning permission would expire towards the end of next season, we could be in a position whereby our local football club is potentially fighting for hopefully another promotion. Yeah, uh, my understanding with the funding and the development is that we will be taking place during summer, summer 25. So I think this is going to stay up possibly through next season and next year. Uh, you know, they're probably going to, I don't know, as you can see, it's still a dirt patch out there. Um, he said it's more realistic to add on 14 months rather than 12 to take it to the end of the season. So, yeah, I don't see this moving anytime, anytime soon. So anytime soon. So very interesting thing to come up after the match. I wanted to get that in there. Uh Hmm. Uh, Drew does whatever is in the, is in the house as well. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to open it up. Uh, I am going to open it up. I've done a half hour of babbling. And if anyone wants to come in, anyone is welcome to have their say after today's incredible match. Uh, incredible match. But I'm opening it up uh, for the night. Uh, the missus is, is, uh, is over there. And she's uh, in the house. So figure we can do another maybe 20 minutes, half hour. Uh, if we can do it, people want to come in. If not, just let me know. I will go and I will shut up and everyone can go to sleep. But um, as we do that, as we do that, let me see what else is going on here. 
Uh, we can. Uh, I was looking at some other things. Uh, this is the one I want to look at too. So the report on the Crawley Town thing, the prolific red dragons. Uh, prolific red dragons. Um, and if I'll, get, I'll give it five minutes. If no one's come in, all good. We can shut her down, and we can we can go tomorrow for the Wrexham news and update show. But uh, prolific red dragons claim back to back victories in a, in a promotion uh, battle for promotion. Great pick by by Barney there. Super excited. This is real Pritchard. Uh, Wrexham uh, boosted boosted their promotion hopes as first Wrexham goal for Ryan Barnett was followed by Paul Mullins Brace. God damn, he had two. He had two more. Um, in uh, six goal this season for Andy Cannon for the four nil uh, after a quiet opening twenty minutes. That's highly uh, that's <laughs> a quiet opening twenty minutes. Um, the twenty first minute uh, after a wait was no longer because Ryan Barnett put one off his face. Mullen extended the lead just uh, uh, just two minutes later. It was quick. It was a one-two punch. It was a bang-bang punch, and it was over. You know, it was it was a quick. It was a, listen. They were out in the feet. It was more of a clever Lang. You know, uh, man, Rocky three. Um, it, they were out in their feet, and they didn't even know it. You know, it was it was good. It was a quick. It was a quick one-two punch. Uh, Andy Cannon then netted a third. Seventeen minutes remaining before Mullen claimed his brace on the eighty-second minute. Uh, Parkinson put Elliot Lee back in the starting lineup. Um, and uh, unfortunately, Colchester did not do a job for us today on Stockport. Craw Crawley came into the game full confidence after a 4-1 win against Mansfield that bolstered their late playoff hopes. So Mansfield took one in the face today, um, uh, the other day, too, off them. So uh, very, very, uh, very good to see. As long as we're just separation, we're showing our quality, I don't care. Uh, Ken's going to come in. and we give Ken, Ken, a, Ken a look. Give me a heads up when you're ready. Give it a thumbs up when you're good to go. Yeah, top man. Uh, Drew does whatever says, I hope we can come, uh, to the end with a trophy and battle with Stockport. Absolutely. What up, man? How you doing? How you doing, Ken? Welcome. Pumped. Pumped. Great. Well, great game. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll, you tell us. What do you, what do you, what are you seeing? Mate, I'm seeing a definite, uh, almost like an improvement game on game. I'm seeing better tactics. I'm seeing... You know, Parky likes to sit back early, 10 minutes, let the, let the players find their feet. Then we started to press and back, like you just said, bang, bang, goal, goal. Goal, goal, right? It's a, it's so, it's unreal. Um, uh, unreal. And um, I don't know, are your take on why the, I don't, well, I don't want to get this negative shit. What, take on like what the performance is. I saw people run around like crazy. Uh, what did you see? Uh, even though the first twenty was not, you know, whatever. What did you see, like uh, on the pitch? What do you see? What What do you think? Well, you I, yeah, I didn't see negative. What I saw was a, a very, a very methodical plan. You know, if you're sitting back and you don't have the ball, you can't make a mistake with the ball and give up an early goal. You've only just got to have strong defence, which we've had. Yeah. Then once you've settled into the game, you come forward, you press, push forward, ran good channels. You know, Lee and Cannon running those angles, delivering the balls, stop it. Right. Just, you know, right. and I asked for Boyle in, at the back and I was wrong and it was Stash and eat my words, did a fantastic job. What, what do you, what do you make of, um, uh, just join the discord too, by the way. Awesome. Yes. TCRL runner one. Awesome. Join that discord. You're going to have a lot of fun there. You got a lot of fun, way too much fun. I mean, way too much fun. Um, so thank you for joining. Uh, um, I, I I will I've said it for a couple of weeks now. I think having Stash and Owen back in, I think we talked about it the other day too, Stash and Owen back in. I think that was our I don't want to say downfall, but then back in, you you know it, it, it's changed a lot of it's changed a lot of the dynamics. I know we don't technically keep the ball on the ground a lot, but I think there's composure there that we don't have, you know? Yeah. And when you look with hindsight, um, he couldn't play Stash back there because he didn't have Geo. Yeah. Um then Gio came back. He's now given the affordability to move Stash back to that defensive position yep. who has better foot skills than Boyle. Like, no disrespect to Boyle. He's been playing great. Player. But player. Stash, yeah. is, Stash is just that slightly next level with mm -hmm. Gio in the middle, with Lee, with Cannon, mm -hmm. McLean on the outside. Like, you know, just yeah. this is pretty much our ideal lineup, yep. except for maybe Palmer right at the front. But but Mullen and Palmer are going well, so you can't you can't sort of really. No, you can't fight that. Anything. You can't fight. And I I didn't. Um, Palmer does a job. I don't know exactly what it is. I I know what it is on the pitch. I want to put it to him. He doesn't win a lot of headers. Um, he's supposed to have a good hold up play. I haven't seen that quite on there too. 
But Mullen and him, they want to play together. So, and, and clearly he wants to play them up front. I, but, you know, moving – if you move back, the rest of it works. You know, Mullen runs himself in the ground every every game. And, you know, and, it's fantastic. But, and, you know, and, and, like, you know, all of us here have given Palmer, you know, not a full round of credit. But there was one moment there where Lee did miss a pass to Palmer and he could have easily scored. Um, and Lee just got missed that pass. And, you know, if he'd scored there, all of a sudden we'd all be going, oh, wow, Palmer's back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, what's up, Ives? How you doing, brother? We're just getting uh, hey, hey, fellas. the hard day's work all for everybody. How you doing? Uh, yeah, yeah, all good. Perfect timing, actually. Good to see you, Ken. You too, mate. Well done. Good good call last night. Well, this morning. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, no, i um, also very happy, very happy with the results. Just buzzing all day, really. On, on to the next one. Um, uh, I... Um, I really enjoyed the goals today. I think the quality of the goals was great. We were clinical. We just took those chances and put them away. Uh, there are a few things that, uh, and I mentioned those things during the um, during the stream that I'm not too happy ab about. But again, just like I was saying before, I will always keep it real. Even if we win 10 nil, I will still find a way to uh, improve us. That's just the way I am. I'm not. I'm not completely sat satisfied. Never. Um, uh, and that's uh, that's that's the growth mindset uh, uh, mindset, and I think that's what the boys on the pitch also have. You know, they all talk about like we're we did good, but we're disappointed with that. That's the growth mindset. And uh, yes, it might sound 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 negative to somebody, but that's the only way you improve. You should never be satisfied. And uh, if you guys are um, looking for the shows and streams and watch-alongs where people sing sing the players praises no matter what and just keep on saying that oh yeah it's great he plays awesome that guy plays even better that's not me that's not us uh if this play is shit i'll say it's shit if this play is good i say it's, it's good uh that's just how it's gonna be and uh because the game of football consists of ups and downs and um yeah i will get into it a bit further tomorrow um um tomorrow when we're doing going through the analysis uh but for now, let's just enjoy the result and uh, on to the next game. And congrats to Barney for his beautiful face goal. Uh, <laughs> more, of, more of those to come, please. Yeah. What, uh, Ken, what did you make of him talking about he wanted to get up uh, he, you know, in the interviews? I know I was reading through him. Like, he wanted – I didn't see – so Barney said he, he got up and he obviously he wanted to get – he obviously got a goal, right? I didn't see Maka. Uh, the only guy that I thought wasn't really, you know – didn't shine today other than probably Palmer was Mecca. I mean, he puts a shift in, but you know, he's not, I don't know. It's not, maybe he's tired. He's got to be tired. I'm guessing. Yeah. The, the style of game that we played tonight, like it doesn't, it can't suit all 11. It never can. And Mecca played a little bit more of a Mendy role. He ran a few times down that channel, down the left, you know, for the passes in, he, was absolutely excellent in shutting down their midfield in a defensive role to stop them getting any quality attack. Like, And that stuff, unless you really are paying attention, you don't see that because it's not pretty. It's just what's needed in a team that you don't see all the time mm -hmm. as just a fan because you're looking at the ball, the play on the ball. But when he's shutting down a midfielder in defence, that, that then gives away an opportunity for them for a passing lane. That's what yeah. I saw from the client, from Mecca. And look, I, I agree with Ken com completely. Wing wing back, it's uh, that hard working position that um, does require just a lot, a lot of dirty work, a lot of tackles, a lot of running. Actually, probably the most amount of running on of all the positions. And um, you can see that today they were pushing through this left side all the time. They were trying to push through through Mecca, so he was just busy uh, repelling the attacks. Yeah, he was kind of pen, he was kind of pinned back in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, can we? Let's. I'm gonna go through the back, through the front here. Ao, uh, give me, it wasn't. I don't think the goal was his fault. Uh, how is his performance today? Didn't have much to do. Came for a couple balls. Uh, Sheldon seems to think that he sees that he's favoring something. I don't know. I don't. We can't. I was spec, we're speculating yeah. a bit. But what do you think about that back line? Back them in the back line. All I give it all. Okay. Well, Ao. Um... If I had to give him a ranking today, I'd say eight out of ten. Could have been a little bit more positive towards getting some balls, but you know, literally let him one goal. It wasn't really his fault. 
Yeah. So you know, a, a more than pass mark for him. Yeah. Um, Stash, nine, nine and a half out of ten. Like played fantastic. Yeah. O'Connell, eight and a half. You know, played played good ball. Both of those players, their delivery. Um, you notice AO didn't do a lot of kicks t- today. Like it was short pass out, so we got more ball. Um, yeah. And then obviously Max on the other side. Wow, what what can you say? Twenty one year old just coming. Like he is playing at championship level now. Yeah. Not Premier League, but championship level. Oh, he's yeah. right close there. Every game he's just getting better and better. They'll be playing League um, One. I would argue with championship level. League One, yes, his first passes still needs a lot of work. And uh, uh, AO, I don't know why he didn't kick today. I would not speculate on on that. I would give AO a um, yeah seven seven and a half out of ten. Uh, didn't make a, any uh, obvious mistakes, came out for a lot of good crosses, uh, could be a bit more aggressive playing out as well, just still a little bit shy, he needs a bit more meat on his bones, but uh, he did make one mistake playing out, uh, completely mis- misplaced the ball, so that's a big no-no. Um, so yeah, I would, I would give him a bit of a smack for that, but uh, at the same time, look, he's a young guy, he's still getting, that's why he's with us, that's why he's not in, in Arsenal, right? Cleworth, uh, AO gets the ball to him on the left. Uh, Cleworth just sends the long ball after long ball. Uh, he probably is told to do that, but at least if you're going to send the long ball, put a post stamp on it. So I think that he's decent uh, off the ball. He's decent in defense. He's decent in his positioning. He needs to develop his first pass. His first pass lets him down a lot. Yeah, I think that's just indicative of some of the hard play. Actually, I mean, yeah, and we should take that back with, with Max. We should be saying he's National League level, so no one's else interested in him. Yeah, yeah, good. get it right, Ken. Could it? He's National League level. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, TCR, uh, TCLR says for, for me, Max is my favorite, and always uh, will be along uh, being a homegrown. But Cannon, my man, is growing. Me. Cannon has 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 gone strength to strength. Uh, you know, ha- he really does. I mean, listen, some of the games he's like doing a lot, but you know, I know, uh, you know, he's he 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 puts this he puts his laces through the ball, and I think he has the goal of the season today. I was saying earlier. That goal, the follow-up goal, uh, and unfortunately, uh, like Elliot Lee did well to turn that ball over. It was a great shot by him, but like that, that short-sighted uh, goal for him was just Jesus. He just wants to belt it, you know. He really does. A great goal. But uh, you see what what led to that goal is Lee putting the ball on the target. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it Absolutely. was not a. It was not the most powerful shot. It was not the best play shot. It was not a top corner. It was simply ball on the target. At this level, keepers will make mistake, and Cannon did well running for it, running for the bounce, and from that distance, from that sharp angle, I scored a goal like that a couple of times. And but you, all you got to do at this stage is literally smack it with the wrath of gods. Mm-hmm. You need to just smack it as hard as you can so that you uh, I had an accident. It goes into the net of the goalkeeper. It happened to me. It went into the net of the goalkeeper's chest because he <laughs> uh, he did not he did not have time to act. You just literally unleash, and it will go in. Yeah, if you're a bit lucky. Yeah. Uh, can, go, can. I don't know the numbers on how many goals we had on target tonight, but it was like close to double figures. I reckon it was it was great. Yeah, eight. a lot more, a eight. lot more than the last couple of games. Yeah, eight. Uh, Drew does whatever says. Uh, I have loved the increase in counterattacks and the amount of speed in the last few weeks. Been phenomenal to watch. Yeah, we do. And and their and their manager said that they break with speed. We're athletic and we're aggressive. We but we change it up a little bit too. We're either aggressive, you know, in like battling, you know, going and imposing our our our, um, our dominance with power, or we have speed. You can see that like we did run with numbers. We gave the ball up one time. And the amount of red shirts that were running back were absolutely, uh, absolutely incredible. By the way, just want to roll this out before we get in there. New member alert, uh, Carolyn HR is a new member on YouTube. Uh, some longtime guy in there, too. Thank you. Uh, good to see you, man. And thank you for coming a member of the local pundit. That's our guy. Um, you know what? I think we're, we we got to talk about a different – we score all four goals apart from the last one, which was a defensive mistake, were scored from a turnover. We have to separate counterattack from a turnover, okay? So uh, in this case, like even though they are very similar and one can happen after another, but turnovers is our key. We we capitalize on on turno- on turnovers in our third and in the neutral zone. Mm-hmm. You can you can see like on the training paddock when we're talking about turnovers, Parky would just be saying as soon as you see the turnover, 
I want everybody just press. Yeah. Just go and like you know, and the because it gives Max, Stash, O'Connell all those options. You know, who am I going to pass to? Who who's who's got the clean break? Which one of the defenders missed their man? Yeah. So yep. the question is, why if we can capitalize on those turnovers? and create those options and opportunities, why do we have to give the ball away when we're building from the back? Listen. We, would, we would not have the problem with goal difference right now. We would be scoring double digits. I think defense so, teams have You know what out, I mean? It's not National League. I, I, you're right. I think teams have figured us out a little bit. And, you know, I think for whatever reason, you know, it's still League Two, and I think we're still trying to. We're not perfect, you know, but we do have better players. No, no, I like that's just like I think I'm being cons constructive here, right? Yeah. So yeah. I'm not just yeah. Well, so and to validate to validate Ivan's point, if you watch um, tonight, if you watch Crawley off the ball, the midfield off the ball, they're moving, they're creating opportunities for their defenders are. to pass them the ball. We don't do that. Yeah, we're stacking. well nowhere near as well as they did. Yeah, yeah. Well, we you see, we are playing. Ken is absolutely right. We are playing our version of Capinacho, which is, you know, which is absolutely fine. If you want to play D, that's fine. Um, that's great. But if you're playing D, you let the other team have the ball. Every time you win the ball, you need to treasure it. Because you just fought for a minute, two, three minutes to get the ball of them, which is fine. If that's what you do, if that's what you're good at, absolutely fine. Italy won a World Cup like that. Uh, numerous teams in Serie A in Italy won uh, League uh, league titles like that absolutely fine if you are playing capinaccio or your version of Cap capinaccio treasure the ball when you get it yeah well we didn't try we didn't have the ball today we got 32 percent of the ball carol and hr big, sorry yeah. uh, sorry uh, carol and hr said i saw a lot of leading passes today a lot of three balls not many squares obviously putting the work in on the pa practice pitch uh i could see that we i could see that mm -hmm. uh we we definitely did there was not a square we didn't pass back a lot we were trying to push the ball forward whether they were accurate passes or not. Granted, we, I, we they outpassed us by double. Let me bring the stats up here before you, I'll be back to you guys. And yeah, depends. well, look. You go on. Sorry, no, Ken, you you, you go. I I spoke enough. No, well, it depends on the it depends on the style of opposition you're playing too, as to the passing style that you can that you can engage in. So you know, and Crawley, the game that, that they came out to play to win today, mm -hmm. and so. You know they pressed and tried to win, but and then our style of game, we built into it, and because they played to win, as they started to tire a little bit through the midway point of each half, that's when the game opened up for us. Little rope a dope, little rope a dope. Yeah, and look, there is um, passes are different, right? So what we have seen with Crawley, a lot of their passes were not positive passes; they were possession passes. So yes. what's called pass uh, pass for a sake of a pass. That's okay. We hold our shape. That's absolutely fine. Just like I said, there is no problem with that. You know, if that's what we do, if we're good at giving the initiative away, and obviously we're doing that systematically now, um, cool, cool. It's just well, what I mean is that the next step for us to improve on is that uh, transition from attack, from defense into attack. And, and every goal that we have scored was scored of a short or medium range pass. Yeah. And none of the balls, none of the long balls that were played led to anything dangerous. Mm -hmm. We, at best, we can hope is win the second ball. All the goals that we scored, apart from the last one, defensive mistake, were scored of a combination of uh, 8, 10, 12 short passes. Lee delivered a beautiful medium range pass uh, for the first goal to Barnett. That uh, goal, if, if it was not going on target with that delivery, it was close to it. And that's exactly what you need to do as a midfielder in this situation. You are delivering a nice solid cross into the pocket of space, but it needs to go on the net. And that's why face contact is enough to put it in the net. Exactly. Is because it's in that it's, it's in that vicinity. No, it's true. It's the basics that you you learn at football schools is that there are certain moments where your crosses need to go on target. Anywhere, anywhere. And that's exactly what he did. Uh, Barnett, was, Barnett was two to three yards out. Like it's you yeah, know. exactly. Yeah, he he could have scored it with his uh, PP. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, I wonder whether that's a training technique. It is a training technique. Uh, it, it happens. It happens more than than you think it does. People score with all body parts. TCRL says, "Nice to, that Sheldon got to see his team and and win as he made the trip better." No, it, it, Sheldon was an absolute ledge today. Uh, Ken, yeah. absolute ledge. Yeah, super highlight, super highlight. It was amazing. Yeah, he was having so much fun. 
and I'm scared for the Venmo now because he might want to stay. He's, <laughs> he's, he's probably right? 12 Guinness deep. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. I think he's going back like tomorrow morning. I feel bad for him. Drew says, score it with Phil Parkinson's eh? Scored score with his Phil Parkinson. <laughs> yeah. with, with his Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. yeah. Um uh okay, we on for about, about fifty here. We'll, we'll a couple of minutes here. Um uh moving on to Saturday's game. Mm. And we'll we'll do a full week. We have a full week of prep getting up for Saturday's game. Yeah. Um are you um, oh, guys sorry, Joshi. To, yeah. to interrupt because you're you we started going through the lines yes so we're talking kind of spoke about let's let's talk about the, the midfield yeah i will shut up go ahead do the midfield. no no i mean <laughs> what do you what did you guys think about you because he was kind of a he was kind of a gray man but not at the same time in the game yeah i've, I've said it for weeks now like him and fletcher our two best football brains yeah he's a smart footballer very smart football he's directing the traffic he's the general in the middle of the field. O'Connell's the general at the back, but Gio is the man in the middle of the park, directing traffic. He doesn't always have to yeah. touch the ball to be to be an influence. Yeah. That's you pretty much just took the words out of my mouth. It's like even when he's a gray man, he still influences the game so much. Just his his positioning skills are amazing. Yeah. So and and here's one example. You have, you know, um Cannon with the ball on the left and Geo in the center, but he drags his man to the right to create space for Cannon. He don't, you don't, all, you don't see Geo actually doing anything, but all he's done is create an extra 10 meters for Cannon. And that is and that is the art of football. Yeah, that is what yeah, he, by the way. Th Rod that's right, he, I, I, I like his, his use of half spaces, of half lanes, and he forces, he forces the opposition to actually think and doubt themselves which zone which lane are they actually covering so he he lets our players uh, attacking players run into those half lanes all the time even though he might not even have the ball it's just yeah it's i think it's only you, you you almost can't teach that that is almost a sixth sense that's mm -hmm. instinctive good footballers yeah. good footballers can play their pattern mm -hmm. great footballers can play their pattern and influence the opposition's pattern. And Jerry they can make them do things they don't want to do. Yeah, he moves, he doesn't, he's not speed, it's not uh, power, it's just, it's cerebral. Um, and a lot of players got that. And, you know, when he puts a pass wrong, it's because he's probably, he gets it in a bad position and he doesn't want to, you know, put it, he'll put one over the top, try to make something happen. But you can see most of his passes are one touch, bang, go, bang. You know what I mean? And and he can play with back to goal. You don't see him. You said, great, man. Okay, uh, Ivan, how we said, I said this to you, and Ken, I think you probably saw it too. He was way, way up the pitch at the beginning of the match, the first 20 minutes. He ended up at the back when we started playing and we started scoring goals. So not at the back, back, but he, like, he moved, he moved back, which I thought was very interesting. He moved him around the pitch. Yeah. Well, think about that. Okay. So think about what you just said there. He's up the pitch and influencing play. Then he comes back. What does his defender do? His defender comes to him, which creates space for the other players to attack him. Yeah. Create the separation in lines. Yeah. I, th I think Gio was instrumental. And like you, Joshua, like you were saying before, uh, the um, the main part of the of that wobble that we had was losing those two guys. Stash and Geo. And now we we got them back, and almost automatically uh, the level of play just uh, goes up a notch or well, two notches. When How many get... games have they been back? Sorry, going good. Yeah, well, only a couple of games. Yeah, yeah. And 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 now they're in top form. Yeah, exactly. And we're, and we're pressing forward. We're not. G, Stash is not in the back. He's in the midfield. And then as by the way, uh, O'Connell does push forward, but Stash is, gets it in the midfield. So it's almost like the back two. Which is O'Connell and uh, O'Connell and and, uh, and Max and everyone else is kind of in the midfield, you know. Although today we didn't have possession, but that we we don't defend uh, like a five in the back unless we have to. Like you have all bus to got to get back. So it's a very interesting lineup when it happens because he got two. He's got a midfielder playing in the back, and he's got a, a guy on the ball, O'Connell, who can who has good enough feet where he's not going to get caught out, and he's quick enough. Uh, a guy cooking up next to him, Max, to make recoveries. You know, so there's something. There's really, it's kind of special having those two in the lineup. Uh, I I noticed the comment about O'Connell as well. His raids forward, uh, guys. O'Connell is um, 
he's the best defender in the league definitely he's uh he's still a definitely a championship level player and he will be one of the best defenders in league one absolutely the guy the guy is uh one of the best defenders to to play in this league ever i would i'd say yeah well he he plays now at the back in the center where toza was playing yeah. toza mm -hmm. couldn't do what o'connell does in terms of speed then mm -hmm. and when you think about the parky style of play when you're talking about geo coming back o'connell coming forward parky doesn't parky doesn't sub people off early so those two rotating like that and actually giving one guy a break means that they can play longer minutes to play the parky style of football and that's the reason why geo dropped back down low in the second half again because he let lee and cannon take over because he, he he needed a rest like you cannot be pushing up front all this time all the game long you have to you have to swap and change and if you need a long ball you know geo does it we don't i don't really you know it doesn't not that it doesn't work we have scored goals on that but it's like it's a gimmick you know sometimes too it's a little bit of a gimmick it's a good thing but like that shouldn't be our i think at some point obviously when uh when tozer went out he got i think Tozer got turned in like two games it's not a bad player but for where we want to go we we need to progress and we want to be better uh geo puts that long ball in if it's a and, all right and you talk about and you talk about um like you know that swapping of players and we're talking about being able to play against other defenses so you think about that midfielder from crawley then as a defender in this moment he's now saying i'm defending evans now i'm defending o'connell it's a different player moves at different speed plays different angles does different passes that player then has to adapt to two players in one game yeah yeah and that's not counting the other two midfielders because they pretty much played a dynamic triangle all game long so in the center there which is which is great that's what needs to happen in three five 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 two you're uh, you um maneuvering bet between two up one down two two down one up and uh it's just it's just great to see that the boys are are doing it uh so instinctively especially on defense because we were defending for most yeah. of the game uh TCRL says Mansfield Town play MK Dons on Saturday, and only one can get the three points. This must be good for the Wrexham boys to relax a little bit. Playing, uh, I don't think they'll be a relax, uh, but I, I hear what you're saying. I don't. I think this is focus time. One more game, one more W, and I'm like, okay, you could start to put the beliefs up, but not yet. Uh, if you want to, uh, as, as Ivan, you want to move, move Ivan and Kenny will move to the front of the pitch with Malls, and you want to talk about. Well, Palmer, um, or I wanted to quickly talk about Lee. To be honest, because I think to me he's my man of the man, uh, man of the game. Uh, he uh, took part in every goal, pretty much, and uh, just just the way uh, the way the guy sort of redeemed himself after being set down. Um, his vision, his movement, uh, ability to take players on, um, uh, that infectious energy. Uh, yeah, I think he will be my man of the season too if he carries on like that. Yeah, fair, fair call, Ivan, and. You know, and obviously there was a lot of commentary mixing up. They couldn't decide between Cannon and Lee. Yeah. And when you talk about a dynamic triangle, Gio has the best two guys on either side of him to play that dynamic triangle, both with speed, both like the ball at their feet, both are instinctively attackers. Mm -hmm. Yep. I um, I played in, in Ukraine and, and Russia grow, growing up, guys. Played a little bit here in New Zealand as well and coached. Mm -hmm. So went through the youth system and so on and so forth, but never really made it big. Yeah. just good enough to get myself in trouble yeah we're all in trouble and hurt at some point yeah. too right and yeah. and i i'm all injured all over the, the place yeah. Yeah. yeah uh yeah elliot lee today was been in the match like close second of the any canada you just said canada it's just uh you know one of those like uh, one of those feel good games you know what i mean like yeah we get frustrated because you know we want to see perfect football never gonna happen but like today was just like one of those things the build up everything going into it where we're getting at so you know really cool and like and uh, like moving forward like Palmer, um, you know, he's going to play Mullen and Palmer together. I, he'll probably do it again on uh, – uh, I don't want to get there. Do I don't want to get there. That's for later in the week. That's for later I in the think, week. Yeah. Yeah, I the week. think someone will get changed there. But, yeah, but then you look at the rest of our midfield, our five set up. You know, you have McLean, um, you know, and Barnett. And, yep. you know, and those guys – and like we were talking about with McLean playing that wing back, that hard roll lot that Ivan's talking about, so much running. But he is our – he is our enforcer. Oh. He's the guy that likes to play hard. 
He's the goat. Did you see that he almost he almost started smacking Andy Cannon up after they scored a second goal? Because they were like hugging up and he turned around like you motherfucker. He was like that's a boy and like like he literally started like giving him a couple of it was so much fun. I was like, yes. It was so much fun. He's the guy. I think that I was saying at the last match, I was like, I think they must have the last game might have been the relief match. I think I, I haven't kind of put it and this one like it was just a, a little bit more elation. It's like, okay, that would just to get over that last hump, Colchester playing on the Hasselhoff pitch, you know, like getting here to this thing, I was just like, you know, I, I just kind of felt like, oh, okay, they can maybe start realizing. And today you saw in the celebrations, is it like elation? It was like, oh, we, we you know, we we know who we are. We haven't shown it all the time, but we know who we are. And it was really cool to see, especially like with the battling and the fighting and things like that and the, and the fun stuff. You know, I, I kind of just feel like, you know, it, we, there's so much pressure on everybody to just deliver, you know? I, all I, teams. Yeah. Yeah. All teams. Yeah. And yeah. everybody handles pressure differently. Yeah. You know, some people thrive on the pressure and yeah. some people buckle under the pressure. McLean, and when well, I'm McLean now, like he is one of those players that thrives under pressure and wants it. Oh, and yeah. you can tell he's the sort of guy at training that is pushing his teammates saying, we can do better. We've got to do this. He is naturally, you can see that in his mentality, his mindset is that way. And I just think, I hope that the, I don't know what the crew pitch is like, but you look at Colchester last game, that pitch was terrible. As soon as we got on our pitch, which is in great condition, we look like a totally different team. Yeah. Pitch yeah. was yeah. soaked to the last night. The good thing is that even with these players, we have a ton of room to improve. Yeah. We are already decent, but we have so much more we can do. And that's that's a good thing. That means that with a little bit of luck, one thing would lead, would lead to another. I mean, next year we have the potential. Mm -hmm. We have the potential. These, these players, they can play all sorts of things, yeah. all sorts of kind of games. And like, let's talk about Mullen, right? Uh, uh, scored a brace. Um, took his chances clinically. How many chances he had? He had two, right? All game. I think he had uh, maybe just the two. He had a he three. Three, you think? Three? Yeah. Header. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, Lee Lee had a header. He hit the post. That's right. No um, had one more on his foot that early that went high. Okay. Right, right. Um, so he came in and he kicked it high. It was almost like a rock. Ivan called it a rocket to Rosie. Uh, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah, but look, he scored two out of three. Not bad. Yeah. That's a sign of a of a of a good of a good decent striker. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and he worked really hard for the third goal too. So you know, that was all, that was all badge. It was all heart. All that. I'm gonna get after this. You. I will show. I will like. I will show you. I'm gonna take the game of like. This is how you win. This is how you go up. Mm. You see, he's focused. You got a brace today. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, TCR every says single, no. every single striker should finish that goal. And if you look closely, so clinical that only just went around the keeper, but the keeper never looked like touching it. Never had a chance. No, it no, was, it was just perfect timing. And the first goal was a tap, and that's exactly the kind of goal strikers need to score a lot. So that's why Holland is so good because eighty percent of his goals are uh, the goal that Mullen scored. Yeah, and he busted a gut to get that. He's like, I'm gonna be, I will out. I will beat you. You're going to go down. I got it. Uh, TCRO. So a personal question to all three. When is your visit to see a live game? It was supposed to be the Stockport game for me. I cannot make it. Uh, so, but I will, I will be seeing a game up North uh, when they go play Chelsea. That's not a league game, but next year, hopefully too, as, as we grow the show. I thought about this, Josh, we should organize a game next year yeah, and all go and do it as a, as a whole thing. That would be local crazy. local pundit tour. Local yeah. pundit tour, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, I um I do have a spinal surgery coming up, um hopefully sooner than later. So once I'm recovered, so hoping next year I'll I'll go and I also have a business to take care of. So I'll yeah I'll have to plan. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll, but we'll, next year, if that's the case, yeah, we'll go. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely be doing that for sure. Definitely we want to go to Wrexham as Drew does whatever. Uh, yes, the local pundit tour definitely for sure. TCR, yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, I, some wild I, shows at, yeah. in Watson. Oh, we so we don't even want to talk about Palmer, right? We're not talking about Palmer. Go ahead. No. Pass, no, mark, I, a pass mark today. A pass. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I, I don't want to talk about Palmer. I thought he did great today. Good defensive work, helped drop back. Yeah. Good job. 
Uh, missed he could have scored a goal. Lee, Lee unfortunately didn't get the pass off to him. He True. broke. He was onside on the left, and Lee just missed the pass. The defender blocked it. Good shout. Yeah. Yeah. I loved it. <laughs> uh, you remember my you remember my comment during this this thing about that. I do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that he's frustrated. I think he's playing a lot. But I think he's frustrated. I think that he is. You know. I just I feel like he's frustrated. I don't know why. You can see he's playing, he's working hard. A lot of this stuff, a lot of that, a lot of this. I think he's frustrated. I'm not sure what that means, but I think he's frustrated. Some All game. of a sudden, he would be playing a lot better if he would have stopped falling every time somebody touches him. Yep. And and Ivan touched on another player who didn't who is Fletcher who didn't play today, but he comes on as a super sub. And I think if that was like a 60-minute sub, if Parky could finally talk himself into a 60-minute sub, yep. Pop Fletcher for Palmer or Marriott for Palmer, I think that would be the icing on the cake for us. Yeah. You know how hard it is to get into a game? You got eight minutes, four minutes to do that. It's Those subs are useless. They're absolutely useless. All, the, only, the only thing that happens to you as a player, you, get, you go down, you get down, you get upset, you feel like you're not being trusted, and your yep. stats are ruined because it still counts as the appearance. He, the, Bolton and Marriott are here for next season. I think they're very good players. I think they're here for next season. They're getting embedded. In, I think this is a big club and a an environment that is a, is a pressure cooker. He doesn't, you know, he's got his guys. He trusts. I think that he's embedding those players for next season. Um, I have to give Parkinson all the credit, and I, you know, I think he's managing the team as a whole, the club as a whole, or whatever. Uh, and and the the results are not lying we can get frustrated we can't we kick every ball to think like oh that this is that we are in second place we are ready to go i you know he's got his faults it's not perfect but i gotta tell you man i am super super we did the right thing we're yeah. you know, i give him i give him full credit you're absolutely right you uh i think that the guy will go down in history of Wrexham. Oh yeah. Oh, so we can say whatever we want, and we're only just like I said. I I just I say what I see, right? So, but overall, the overall strategic picture, he will go down as a hero, unless something goes absolutely horribly wrong. Um, I what I wanted to say is that if Fletcher had half an hour today, half an hour just just over, he would have scored. Oh yeah. Yep. yep absolutely. And Ivan hit on it earlier. Like you're right. Parky has his plan. He's sticking to it. It's working. We went from National League to League Two, League Two to League One, you know. Um, but then, you know, he's he has his plan and, and it's working. The only thing, and I put a few comments in while you guys were doing the watch along, mm -hmm. just doing my head in. We're three nil. We have players that you can now pull off and rest, be ready for FGR, mm -hmm. and bring on, you know, Fletcher, Bolt, yeah. Marriott, you know. Give these guys a break. Like Lee, who we had to play extra at Colchester, had to play all this one. If he would have gotten the last half an hour off, that playing 60 minutes instead of 90 minutes yeah. makes a massive Huge difference. difference in recovery. Yeah. Yes. Same yeah. as Mullen. Mullen on, pay, on painkillers. Yes, I understand he scored a second goal, but why is he playing? Why is he playing? Get off. Get off. Yeah, and I think yeah. it's like it's a door for Fnatic, and we're like, yeah, we, you know, we want it. And like, I get it, man, uh, but... It's just, uh, it's impressive what we're doing amongst all of this. And we we drill down. Like, we get really deep. We drill down. As my father-in-law is like, oh, you guys get in? Like, oh, yeah, we do. We're drilling down. We're into it. And it's like, okay. But the proof is in the pudding. He'll look at you and go, yeah, we won the game. Yeah, we're going up. Like, okay, great. But, you know, but we're here to well, – go ahead. To that, I could also say, like, look, buddy, you have the biggest budget and the best players of the league. Yeah. You, you know? Go. We like there is no excuse really not to. So if we, uh, I'm like, don't don't get me wrong, please. But we do have the best players of the league. We do, and, I... and this is what fans do. And we're the extreme of the fans. We want the best. We're looking for improvement. How yeah. can we make another one two percent better? I mean, yeah, love Parky. He's got his plan. We're in second place. We're in a great position. Three games to play. Yeah. But if we could have two more Ws on the board for the season. Oh. Already, like before today, we'd be where would we be? 85. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. I know. Uh, we are sitting pretty. We are really sitting pretty. Um, but uh, we'll wrap it up there. Uh, it's good to see you both. 
uh, Ken, uh, give a shout out. It's good to have you back with a good Wi-Fi. And that, is that a uh, the steer in back here? You back that's home? A yak. That, that's a yak. So that's like an English style, like Highland Highland cow. I love so, that. It's like, there, almost you know, like Angus Angus beef. Tastes good. Well, yeah. Like I would have it medium yeah. rare. Ivan would just kill it and eat it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just wanted to say, uh, Ron RTC, Ron, a huge respect, buddy. Thank you for your feedback. Please don't take me the wrong way. Like I, I know it takes people a little bit of time to get used to my style of of uh, commentary and my style of assessment. But my background, uh, I do come from military background as well, and uh, I play different professional sports, and I just. I, I sometimes sound harsh, but I am a huge Wrexham supporter, and um, yeah, I I love your feedback. Give me shit, like you can swear at me, do whatever you want, nothing can can hurt me. Uh, I love all that stuff. So uh, yeah, I will always be there to uh, to have a good constructive conversation. Awesome. So that's what makes the community good. Uh, Ken, you got any outs left? Or it's good. Thank oh, you. Mate, good too, man. Just like Ivan would say, bring the next game. Yeah. Bring the next game. FGR. Let's do what we did today and have another good win. Yep. And we'll do the build up all week. We'll do a we'll do a build up through the week. We'll do a live shows and everything like that. So uh I appreciate your passion, says uh TCR. Yeah, and Ken's too. Love you, man. Love you. It's it's awesome. Please, yeah, on Discord you now join us. We're actually having a very good community uh right now. We're creating something really special. And thank you guys, thank you, all of you. All right, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll drop you guys down. Ken, we'll see you soon. Good to have you on. You're always welcome, as you know, as you know, regular, becoming a regular, which is great. So thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ken, it's been a pleasure, buddy. Thank you. Yeah. Ivan, as always, Josh, keep up the great work, guys. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. Next game. Forget about everything. Do your job. Win next game. Let's go. Win, win, win. Win, win, win. All right, guys, I'll see you soon. All right, drop these guys off. Uh, Ivan, I'll see you soon, brother. Good to see you, Ken. Ivan, that's my guy. I would. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Love it. Um, awesome. That was a fun show, man. Uh, the Rex me action tonight. Uh, wanted to get it up. Uh, like I said, just you know, it's a long day, but oh, it's a good day. Really, really good day. Really happy and everything. And uh, such great conversations uh, with Ken and Ivan and everyone in the chat. Uh, everyone get involved. And it's good to see good uh, the faces, uh, the, the new faces, and in the chat, and also you know getting the regulars in and having our say. But uh, yeah. 4-1 win today, Wrexham reaction, uh, Wrexham to Crawley Town, who are hot, uh, probably be in the playoffs. Uh, my Dragon beat your devil. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, lots of fun today. And uh, had the pregame build up with Sheldon, uh, just having a great time. Uh, go back and watch that. It was a great, listen, the wind was there, but it was a great little watch. Get the inside look at what's going on. It's a first for the local pundit. I got to tell you, it's a first for the local pundit. It's fun. And uh, we want to do a lot more of that stuff. And if anyone is going to the matches and they want to hook up uh, with us and they want to do the live content, happy to set that up with everybody. So um, it's really, really good. And uh, you guys are all special. The guys and gals are all special and uh, building a really great community. Uh, on, on the other note, do um, we do the uh, watch uh, the, the post 90 with the Red Horde, uh, Sean. So go follow the Red Horde, Sean. Also go follow Dazzle and go follow um, and go follow the Matt at the Racecourse Ramble, who is uh, got a show tomorrow night, and this is Wrexham is also tomorrow night too. Uh, we will get those in. I think everyone is in our Discord, uh, which is great, and we're building this awesome, awesome community. The local planet is growing because of you and everyone else out there, and Wrexham is the hub, uh, and we love it. It's so much fun to do, and this has been such a great day on a Tuesday. So um, I will see you all tomorrow for the uh, Wrexham react. Uh, sorry, Wrexham react. We just did it now. I will see everyone tomorrow for the. Uh, uh, Rex and News and Update show. Things are going to happen throughout the week. Uh, Saturday, we do the watch along and the post 90s. And uh, we have three games left. We're sitting in great position. Uh, one game, uh, we have, uh, we have, sorry, we have uh, three games left. We are uh, four points behind Stockport who are leading. They have a game in hand, and we are in a fantastic position. So, um, really, really fantastic day. So, on that bombshell, I will see you all soon. <laughs>